The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which you ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. For the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouths shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, 
and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word, let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet in the ways of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds. 
but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. Thy holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, Thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore praise thee, pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with the, all thy saints in glory everlasting. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, uh, dear saints of of our community, I um, I wonder if you have understood all this, as our gospel asks. I think it's important to look at context. Jesus is encountering intense resistance from the religious hierarchy, the scribes and the Pharisees, they have just demonized him as being in league with Satan. Either they do not understand him or they understand him all too well. He is a threat and they must discredit and silence him lest the Roman army come crashing down upon all of them. It's at this precise point that Jesus begins to speak to them in parables, which seem like cryptograms to them. As Matthew writes in a section that has been omitted from this morning's lectionary, quote, Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. 
This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. What is it that has been hidden from the foundation of the world? In Plato's allegory of the cave, in his uh, in the Republic, prisoners are chained together deep down in a cave where they all face a wall. Just behind them, various objects pass in front of a fire that then casts shadows of these objects on the wall in front of the prisoners. It's all the prisoners know. To them, reality consists of these shadowy objects, which they speculate and opine about endlessly. The religious and political leaders who resist Jesus's actions and teaching are like these prisoners. They are all locked into their own narrow perceptions and opinions, which is all they know, and which they take as certainty. Jesus is not one of the prisoners. He comes down into the cave as one who has seen the truth in the light of day, outside and above the dark cave. And because Jesus reveals a truth that cannot be seen upon their little wall, they think him mad. And dangerous. The parables that Jesus begins to tell are telling. Parables from uh, the Greek, uh, the Greek uh, para bole, that is to throw alongside. Uh, these parables are thrown alongside the path and. Those with the ears to hear, hear. Those with the eyes to see, see. But to the others who don't hear or see, uh, they are closed off. They are in the cave. Each parable reveals a secret of the kingdom of heaven. A secret that is hidden. Like good poetry, each parable was a beautiful gem that had the power to dislodge, disrupt, and even turn upside down the shadowy opinions on the wall. Over the past couple of weeks, I was like one of those tied down prisoners forced to imagine shadowy figures on a wall as truth. I was staying out in the country in a ranch house near Kerrville with my wife Gwen and uh, Riley Webb's mom and dad, Kevin and Donna Webb. Sadly, we spent more than our fair share of time-consuming media that described over and over again our sad state of the world. I got caught in this web. I got caught up in all of the political and religious machinations that were dancing on my wall. I got agitated. I began to scapegoat the scapegoaters. I got angry at relatives and friends who saw the shadows differently. I couldn't help it. I was caught. Now, in the midst of all that, we started hearing reports about a comet called Neowise that had been discovered by astronomers just a few months before. And apparently we had a window of about three days to see it, or we'd have to wait another 6,800 years before it would return. 
It was supposed to be very low on the horizon in the northeast part of the sky, just below the Big Dipper. On the first night, around 10 o'clock, with binoculars in hand, we walked outside and looked up into the awesome heavens. I had never seen the Big Dipper so clear or beautiful. But we couldn't find the comet Neowise anywhere. On the second night, assuming that the comet had been hidden behind hills that we couldn't see over, we walked about a mile to a place that was supposedly higher. Still, no Neowise. The next night was cloudy. Despite the fact that this was our last chance to see the comet, most of our party had given up. But on a hunch and a nudge, Kevin and I drove to another place on the property that was at the base of a, a fairly steep mountain. We parked the Jeep and started walking up a very steep incline on a very dark night, slipping and sliding. There were clouds above, and it seemed hopeless. One misstep, and we would literally tumble down to bad form. It was dangerous. Finally, at the zero hour, we reached a fairly level ledge on this mountain slope and we stopped to take a breath and a sip of water. We turned around and looked. The clouds were gone. And just over the horizon in front of us, we saw Neowise. It looked like a fuzzy tennis ball to the naked eye, but with the binoculars, you could see her rushing through our solar, solar system with her tail so gloriously and beautifully strewn, strewn behind her. There was awesome transcendence, a feeling that was a, a feeling of beauty. Neowise became a parable of beauty, a tiny little mustard seed that God had thrown along my path. All of my consternation melted away in that moment. Neowise was the pearl of great price that was worth infinitely more than all the shadowy opinions and shadows that had been dancing on my cave wall. Neowise leavened my whole outlook and enabled me to see my world once again through the lenses of compassion and not vitriol. Jesus gives us the key to unlock our chains. He invites each one of us to follow him up and out of the cave. Once we are out of the cave, we have the chance to see the truth. The truth is found in our friendships, in our love of neighbor, through parables of beauty. Jesus himself is the compassion of God embodied. His heart is breaking and his gut is wrenching at the plight of the forgotten, the poor, the misshapen, the prisoners, the despised, the marginalized, the scapegoated. Did you know that the mustard seed is actually a weed and that no self-respecting farmer would ever sow such a seed into his field deliberately? But Jesus identifies with what the world calls weeds. In the light of the day, outside the cave, such weeds become beautiful and beloved by the God who shines upon all. This, then, is the secret that 
has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Once we recognize the truth that we are beautiful and beloved, weeds and all, then we enter into the kingdom of heaven. Beloved, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. So who will separate us from the love of God? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine, nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or rulers or things present or things to come or powers or heights or depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So good morning to everybody uh, who's joining us for online worship. Uh, Winnie asked me if I would do something we haven't done in a while uh, while we're online, and I've brought uh, to Des Moines several quilts that she made for young children uh, that are uh, waiting to be blessed. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and offer that prayer right now, and I'm doing it right as we enter our offertory time. I think a lot of us uh, kind of take offertory to be synonymous with collecting the money. And that's not what we're doing right now. Um, although, if you go to allsaintsaustin.org, um, well, uh, that's another time. Anyway, what Offertory is about is offering ourselves and our gifts and our talents and our hopes and fears to God. And so it's in that spirit that we offer this blessing for these quilts. May God's grace be upon these quilts, warming, comforting, enfolding, and embracing. May these mantles be a safe haven, a sacred place of security and well-being, sustaining and embracing in good times as well as difficult times. May the ones who, believe, who receive these quilts be cradled in love, kept in joy, graced with peace, and wrapped in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty be upon these quilts, be upon those who receive these quilts, upon those who made them, upon us and upon all creation. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, thou, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things that are eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made us in your image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom. We commend to your loving care all those who suffer from any illness or disease. Relieve their pain. Guard them from all danger. Restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength and raise them up to a life of service to you. Hear us, we pray, for your dear name's sake. Amen. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far, far off and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I invite your own prayers and intercessions now. Of course, uh, we'll turn the floor over to Lee in a moment, but I'd like to allow uh, now for people to unmute and offer their own prayers. Uh, this is Charles. I'd like to um, um, pray for those who have been affected by the coronavirus, both those who have died and have gotten sick, but also those who have suffered from the economic consequences of lost jobs and financial hardship. And also I'd like to pray for rec racial reconciliation and for reconciliation between um, you know, protesters and police and and I also would like to express gratitude for All Saints Church for these wonderful church services. And I'd like to express gratitude for all the beautiful things of nature, pretty sunsets and trees and flowers and, you know, all the beautiful things that God created. Charles, we need to talk about getting you more roles in worship. I love hearing you pray. Thanks. Thank you. I'd like to say a prayer for my friend, Monica, um, who discovered this week that her cancer is back.
Are there others? Leah, I wonder if you could share with us then uh, what's come over the chat. Me too. We pray for David Alvarado, who died of COVID this week. We pray for Jennifer Ropuck, who died this week, and for her husband and her family. We pray for Sarah, who's hospitalized with COVID. We pray for our country. We pray for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We give thanks for the life and legacy of John Lewis. We pray for healing for John and Rudy. We pray for Portland and Austin. We give thanks for Marcus's birthday. We pray for healing for Jill, Shannon, Richard, and Lou. We pray for Samantha, Cece, Paul, Janie, and their families. We pray for reconciliation with Sophia. We give thanks for Randy's healing. We pray for Sarah, who's in the hospital in Corpus with COVID. We pray for Stephanie as she steps up her job search. We pray for Claudia, Pam, Rebecca, and Ananias. We pray for Glenda, who's sick with typhoid. We pray for the Dow family. We pray for Langston, who is ill. We give thanks for the life and service of Dennis Trump. We pray for Nathan and Kelly and their ministry, and for their children, Vitali and Maria. We pray for Leslie Ann as she recovers from surgery. We pray for our exhausted medical teams and caregivers across the nation, that you give them strength and courage to continue. We give thanks for the rain that is at my house as we speak. We pray for Sharon, Joyce, and Jackie who are all suffering from COVID. We pray for South Texas as people recover from the hurricane and flooding. We pray for Carmen who is hospitalized we give thanks for our wonderful sewing and quilting ministries. We pray for Josh, who's looking for a job, and all those in similar situations. We pray for Betty, who's been diagnosed with cancer. We give thanks for Billy Tweedy, who blessed our prayer monkeys on Friday. We give thanks for Addie's 12th birthday. We pray for Debbie and for the soul of her husband, Bill, who passed away yesterday. We give thanks for Gordon Wilkinson's third birthday. We give thanks for the birth of Finley, Francis's first grandchild, Francis's neighbor's first grandchild. We pray for Betsy and family for their loss. We give thanks for both of the right grandchildren who are out of the NICU and home with their parents. Amen. I want to say a word of thanks for uh, my daughter, Nell, who's uh, uh, just told us that she's found a job in Portland, Oregon, and she's staying out of the, uh, she's staying out of the riots and staying uh, on, on the job. So we're excited about that. Any other prayers? Well, as always, I wanna offer thanks uh, for you because um, the, the, uh, the seriousness and the, um, and the wisdom of your prayers are amazing. So let us pray, almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee and has promised through thy well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for thy people. granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The power of God enfold you. The power of Christ protect you. The leading of the Spirit guide you and the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>
Thank you so very much. I want to say a special word of thanks to Steve Boyles, who's our uh, guest organist today, while, uh, while Gregory is away enjoying some uh, uh, very richly earned vacation. I want to thank everybody. Um, Steve, uh, if I had realized that that particular passage from Romans was coming up, I would have tried to arm wrestle you for it. But uh, I got to say, that was really, really well preached, and I really love that and appreciate it. Um, Diane, Tom, Nancy, and Brooks, thank you for your great work today. Welcome home to uh, Lisa, Diane, and to Lee, and to all the Etheridges and Reeds, um, and to Pamela Bell and Charlotte Sullivan, who are um, in roles that uh, you, again, it's one of those where if you don't see it, that means they did it right. Um, so that's, that's really fantastic, and we're so grateful to have all of you here. I'm going to drive back with Becky uh, tomorrow and we'll be in Austin by uh, tomorrow night. And I'm expecting it to be a little bit warmer there. Uh, what I'm, I'm heading into, I guess, is a whole lot of COVID-19 and a hurricane. But other than that, really looking forward to seeing you again very soon. Um, Don, I'm hoping Don Carlson is with us and can tell us a little bit about what we might be expecting next week. Sure. Um, we've got uh, a real special Sunday next Sunday. Uh, two graduating seniors, uh, Ava and Kelly, have an incredibly wonderful sermon. Uh, I got to hear it on Friday uh, for us. Uh, we also blessed our monkeys on Friday and uh, presented them to some of our seniors, all videotaped and uh, ready to go. So it's going to be a really neat Sunday next Sunday. Fantastic. So make a point of tuning, uh, tuning in next week. I'll get a note out to make sure that people know to expect a very special day. I think it's going to be terrific. Other announcements that folks have? Uh, Lane, I've been working with the uh, committee to revalidate our core values. So I invite everyone to go to the website and look at the current statement of core values. I think we'll end up with a statement that's very similar, but with some more pointedness and intentionality. Uh, but I'd like for everyone to contribute. Um, I will be having Jerry send out the link to those core values so it's clear to those who have trouble finding it. And as the meetings are scheduled, just look for those in the email blast um, or contact me directly with your thoughts about the core values. That's fantastic. I really appreciate that. And um, I, I um, also know that uh, you and I have both been working with our fantastic stewardship team and they are definitely on track. So um, nobody gets excited about uh, people coming and asking for money, but I got to tell you, uh, this team knows what they're doing and it is, it is really fantastic. I'm looking forward, to, uh, looking forward to launching the campaign and that will be around the end of August. So hang on for that. Other announcements? Well, hearing none, I'm going to ask about birthdays and anniversaries. Who's got some? I'd like to uh, add my, my grandson August's uh, birthdays and anniversary. He was 19 on, on Wednesday. Fantastic. Congratulations. Uh, our granddaughter, Heidi, uh, celebrates her 14th birthday today. That's excellent. Happy birthday to her. On Friday, Joy and I were in Houston. To celebrate our youngest grandson's birthday, who was who turned eight, Blake Chandler. Fantastic. Fantastic. Happy birthday to her. Yeah. And I just had our uh, uh, 16th wedding anniversary. Congratulations to you. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Um, okay. My husband, Mike, and I, this is Alice Nether, we celebrated our 12th anniversary last week. Well, happy anniversary to you. Billy and I just celebrated our 17th wedding anniversary. Must be, uh, must be the season. Mm -hmm. Other um, birthdays and anniversaries? Yes, uh, our family just celebrated mm -hmm. the 23rd anniversary of our adoption of Holly this week. Congratulations, that's fantastic. Awesome. And I'd like to give a, a, a shout out to everyone who participated in the car drive. It was a massive success. Thank you, everyone. Thank this you. It's Tuvia's birthday. It is? Today is the day? It was. Oh, it was? No, his birthday was on Monday. It was on Monday. And uh, I 
Yes, it was a That's success fantastic. for COVID. Uh, for COVID birthday, it was awesome. That's fantastic. Others? Just in case we uh, are out of uh, internet access next week, uh, because we're going to be back at the cabin. Uh, my mom's got uh, her 98th birthday coming up uh, next week. And uh, two days later, Ruth Ann and I celebrate our 54th wedding anniversary. Oh, that's fabulous. Congratulations on that. <laughs> and Addie's birthday was a couple weeks ago, the first time we've been on it in a little bit. So happy Good birthday. Good for you. Her. Good for you. Happy birthday and, and welcome back. Any others? He hasn't said it, but Bobby Wright put, uh, it's, he says, this Friday we will celebrate my father's 97th birthday, Robert Wright Sr. On that day, I will also turn 68. Terrific. Any others? Well, let's say a prayer for all of these birthdays and anniversaries. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And that concludes our worship, and I want to hand off to my colleague Steve to see if he will take us into virtual coffee hour. Now, I also want to say a word uh, to those who might be about to uh, end your connection, um, just in case. There's also a video coming um, a few minutes into coffee hour from our, uh, our youth team and the uh, uh, production company, uh, it will be excellent, so I hope you'll stick around for that. Steve. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Bible Time Machine uh, video is, is coming up, but before we, we uh, have a chance to see that, just wanted to just open the floor and, and see, see how you all are doing or if anybody has something good for our community. Steve. I love you. Hello? Steve? Yeah, hey Mary. Uh, that sermon of yours was the most spectacular one I've ever heard you deliver. I oh, hope you are on. very proud of yourself. Uh, I mean, it really was excellent. That was incredible. <laughs> and oh, thank I have you. to agree. Thank, to thank you. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I needed a little pick-me-up this morning and between that and King George the Rector at the beginning, that's just, it woke me up, Brian, both of them really were nice surprises. So, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, but. Oh, go ahead, Charles. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that the story that you told about the comet, about how you're you know, walking up to see the comet and it was cloudy. Um, I had a similar experience. No, I didn't go on any dangerous trails. I was on main trail, but I'd gone to see, back in 1989, there was a really spectacular lunar eclipse. And I went to see it, and the thing is, though, is that during the first half of the eclipse, as the moon was going behind the um, a shadow, um, it had been cloudy all the whole time. And so most of the people who had gone there to see the eclipse, this is that wild basin, and most of the people had gone to watch the lunar eclipse had already left because they gave up on it. But just about the time, but after the moon had um, um, entered totality of the eclipse, then the sky cleared, and you saw this big copper moon that looked kind of like a like an old like an old penny and then we watched it as it came out from behind the shadow and it um began, gradually became to be a more normal looking moon as probably the most spectacular lunar eclipse i've ever um, seen but so it just goes to say it's not over till it's over so you know it's good to stick around even if it's cloudy and you and your story about seeing the clouds as you were going up the third time to that place where you could see the comet made me think of that yeah, very cool. And I also like that thing that they did before the uh, prelude, that, that thing that sounded like music from Hamilton. Yeah, That's kind of well, neat time. That was amazing. Lane, tell us about your friend who did that. 
Uh, well, actually, I don't know him. Um, no. uh, another friend, a Lutheran pastor out in the California yeah. desert, sent that to me. Um, it is on YouTube, and it apparently um, apparently it just went up uh, late yesterday, and he sent it, he sent it to me. Um, I I did write to the rector. Um, I'm forgetting his name now, but the guy who who wrote and produced that, um, he's in Georgia. I sent him a text message and asked if I could have permission to. Uh, uh, to use that. And uh, so he has not said no, but he hasn't said yes. So depending on his answer, it may or may not go into the version we post on YouTube. I don't want to steal somebody's stuff. Um, but it, it was just brilliant. I thought he did a great job. Just right. Uh, hi, uh, this is Evelyn Kais and David. And I just wanted to say, Steve, that was an incredible sermon. I agree completely. And we too had a virtually identical experience. Ours was in 2009 when we went with a group of colleges to China for, the, um, for what was supposed to be the longest solar eclipse for the next 100 years. And it was going to be at Shanghai. Um, and the, uh, we went with the person who was the leader of this college group was Rick Benzel from MIT, who was the head of the Astronomy Society went of America. Went to the University of Texas. Yeah, California. he went to UT. So he was uh, he was being followed around by every news organization on the planet. But they all decided it wasn't worth it because it was going to be cloudy and rainy that day. But our little group went on out there anyway, out to Dishway Bay outside of Shanghai. And it was cloudy. It had been raining. And suddenly, just when the eclipse was supposed to start, the clouds completely parted. All of the, the birds grew silent. The crickets came out instead. The sky turned black. And then this red line, just like a Chinese dragon, went across the waves on Dishway Bay, which looks almost exactly like Galveston Bay. And Suddenly, the, uh, the sun was completely blotted out and black, and there were Bailey's beads around it and the corona around it, and that was an unbelievably powerful experience. And it was one that the only people who came out there to catch it were, were CBS. Apparently, they decided it was worth seeing, and it did happen. Everybody else went out to uh, the sea of Japan on a ship and it was cloudy there. There was just enough cloud and haze in the air that you could look at the, um, and Rick Benzel told us, he was president of the North American Astronomical Society also. And he told us, you can look at it with bare eyes. So we were able to see the beautiful eclipse without any kind of uh, film or uh, black, uh, you know, safety goggles or anything. So it was fabulous. And he had also told us that that was a way that that you know, this was something predicting the eclipse, an eclipse like that was what could make priests in very ancient times very, very powerful, because this is where you recognize the full power of God. And it was absolutely true. Everyone sensed that very deeply. It was something beyond anything in ordinary experience. And I'm so glad you had that experience too. And I'm so glad you shared it with us. It was a truly beautiful sermon. Thank you. You know, I think I've, I got, could, I've got goosebumps on both arms as you describe that. Thank you for that. Well, and I, and I am willing to predict the next eclipse um, because I am pretty powerful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Steve, one, one thing uh, about the, um, uh, the eclipse that uh, Evie just referred to, the, the dragon on the, on the water, the, you can picture like uh, you could here at Clear Lake or Galveston Bay or somewhere, you could picture lots of little ripples all across the water from the breeze. And just at the point where the sun is going to go completely black and you have this corona around there, which turns a, a red orange, that red orange's light came down and lit up the top of all the wavelets yeah. all across the water, but all the trowels were black. Yeah. So picture the brightest red-orange Chinese dragon you've ever seen a picture of, 
and there were hundreds of them all across there and it was just for five or 10, 15, 20 seconds and that was it. You know, uh, beauty is the antidote for uh, these times we are in. So may may all of y'all uh, pay attention and and see it. Uh, they're they're like mustard seed. And beauty is like a mustard seed, I think. Y'all, we're, we're uh, we need to have some time for for the uh, Bible time machine. Uh, so can I pass that on? And then if we have yes. any time at the end, we can pick back up. Who is going to show that? I am, Steve. Okay, Don. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, welcome, everyone. And as you're aware, our children from the Godly Play and Production Company have been having virtual class all spring. And uh, a big thank you goes out to Barbara Reyes and my wife, Kathleen, and Sarah Pete and Mary Wheaton, who've been leading that. Um, and we're really excited to share with you that on June 28th, every kid from their home um, did their own parts and we put together Bible Time Machine. So Lane, if you can start that up for us. Zoom again. Yeah, I guess, but I'm bummed that we didn't get to build a time machine. Hey, I see a Zoom control that says time machine archive. It doesn't archive like old stuff. That'll be boring. Maybe not. I'm going to click on it. I bet it won't work. Click on 1,500 years before Christ. I want to get far away from COVID-19. from Austin, Texas. Who are you? Austin, Texas? Never heard of it. I'm Pharaoh, ruler of Egypt. Did Moses send you? Moses? No way. Moses no, why? Moses has been a pest, always saying, let my people go, but I can't let his people go. Who will build my pyramid? I've got to have slaves. Slavery is wrong. You're on Moses' side. He said God would make me sorry for keeping the Hebrews as slaves. And it's been one bad thing after another. We know about plagues. We have COVID-19. Listen to this. First we have blood or bloody water, then swarms of frogs, then lice. Oh, those lice made me itch. Then there, then there were nasty flies. Then the cows and sheep got sick. Everybody got boils. Gross sores all over their body. Last month, the hailstorm ruined all the crops, and locusts came and ate everything in, in sight. The sky turned up. Wow, I remember this story. You're going to have one more plague, and it's the worst. Everyone's oldest child will die. What? How do you know? Never mind that. Let's get out of here. In my family, I'm the oldest child and I don't want to die. Bye.
Yikes, that was a close call. Yeah, worse than COVID-19. But look, now we're in a desert. This is no place for people. You can say that if can Moses let us out of slavery, then he went off and left us in the desert. You mean when you went up to Moses Mount Sinai? Yes, we did. Now what? Now, yes, we didn't know what to do without him. So you made a golden calf to worship, didn't you? That was your idea. Yes, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Man, Moses was angry when he came down from the mountain and saw people worshiping that calf. He was bringing you some tablets for the Ten Commandments, wasn't he? Yes, he was. When Moses saw the golden calf, he was so angry he broke them. He broke the tablets with the Ten Commandments? Yes, I felt so bad. I said I was sorry. Were, were you sorry because you realized the calf was an idol, not God? Yes, God told us the ten best ways to live, loving each other and being honest. Did God forgive you for making the golden calf? Of course, because I was sorry and I said so. Everyone makes mistakes and we can repent. I'm glad you turned your life around. Hey, let's keep moving. Bye. Bye. I'm not sure how this thing works. It's <laughs> not fair. What's not fair? That I can't have a baby. Did you ask God to give you one? Yes, of course. God said I will have a baby, but when? I remember that story. You just have to be patient. God will keep that promise. But I'm tired. You're of waiting. I want a baby now. Well, that was rude. We left without even saying goodbye. Sorry, I could have something by mistake. Who are you? I'm Hagar, a servant. What are you doing in the world? I'm hunting for something to eat. Not much growing here. You should have been living with other people in Ted. It's dangerous out here. I know. I'm hungry and scared. My mistress, Sarah, sent us away because my son, Ishmael, made fun of her son, Isaac. That's no reason to kick you out. She hates us, plain and simple.
remember this story. God does take care of you. I hear my son calling me. I better go. Goodbye. God will hear your prayers and be with you. I wanted to get away from paw problems, but we find we're finding problems everywhere we go. That's for sure. Well, let's see if we can go find Jesus. Maybe that will be better. What's this? Two more girls? Are you all right? I was dead, but Jesus brought me back to life. Who are you and what are you doing here? We're from the future. Wait a minute. Are you Jairus' daughter? Jairus' daughter? Yes, I am his oldest daughter, and this is my little sister. Your father begged Jesus to heal you, but when he got to your house, you were already dead, right? Yes, she was dead. Jesus told me to get up, and I did. What did your parents say? They said it was a miracle. I never believed that story. It sounded too crazy. But isn't any crazier than your story about being from the future? I guess that's true. We're looking for Jesus, so we're going to go now. Bye. That's cute. Oops. I hope we didn't go too far. Look, there's the temple. There's someone praying. Let's go ask him if he knows where Jesus is. Dear, dear God, thank you for making me so awesome. I never do anything wrong. Hello, we're looking for Jesus. I don't need Jesus. I'm rich and I give money to poor people. I bet Jesus thinks you need to ask for forgiveness because nobody's perfect. We learned about this at church. If you recognize a sin and ask God to forgive you, you and God will be closer. That's reconciliation. Well, maybe. Hey, remember, we're looking for Jesus. Let's just hop forward a tiny bit. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Are you Jesus? We're looking for him. I met him. I had dinner with Jesus last night. Last night? Yes, with the other disciples. What did he say? We shared bread and wine. He said we should remember him by sharing bread and wine together. We still do it. We still do that. It's called Eucharist or Holy Communion. What? I'm Isa, and I'm visiting here from the year 2020. I actually live on the other side of the earth. Okay, if you say so, I guess Jesus really did change the world. If we want to talk to Jesus, we better hurry up and find him. You're right. Bye, Matthew. Bye. <laughs> I bet we went too far. Excuse me, are you Jesus? No, I'm Thomas. Can you tell us where Jesus is? We really want to talk to him. He's dead. He was crucified him last week. 
I knew we went too far. Stupid, stupid Zoom. Wait, last week? Jesus died last week? Then we should be, then we should be risen already. He is risen, but don't advertise it. He came to us when we were hiding from the Romans. Are you sure it was Jesus? I can't believe it at first, but he told me to touch the holes in his hand. And it is in his hands, and I did it, it was definitely him. And you for Darren, he had Dredson? No, but he said that people who don't get to see him, but still believe him, are especially blessed. I guess that's a bummer. We're never going to see Jesus. Might as well go home. I don't see a home page on this. Had to click on. Hmm. Let me try this. I... Listen, Christians, be cheerful, follow Jesus, and keep the faith. Um, excuse me, who are you? And how can I be cheerful when we just miss seeing Jesus? I'm Paul, and I'm telling you, Jesus is in heaven with God, but he's also here with us. You're talking in riddles. Tell us straight, is Jesus in heaven or here? Both. Jesus said he would always be with us. We are his body in the world now, and he needs each of us to do God's work. Work. We are God's eyes and hands and heart in the world. We have to love God and love each other. We are all part of the body. Uh, Paul, what about that snake that bit you? Was it part of the body of Jesus? Well, I was definitely part of God's kingdom. What, will I, what I'll never understand is why people call that two-stepper doodlebug. <laughs> I can answer that. You see, our class made this movie about your life and the early church and about the early church and Yeah, and now Paul will never know why the snake is called Doodlebug. That's okay. He gave us lots of to wonder about, too. That's true. This was the best Zoom meeting I've ever been to. And you know what? Know what? Even though we can't all get together, God is still with us. And we're... We are still with God. I mean, we still know the 10 best ways to live. We can still ask for forgiveness when we make bad choices. And when we do, we will feel close and blessed by God. That's reconciliation. Yeah, we still have all the sacraments as outward signs of God loves us. Like baptism and marriage. Eucharist and the Holy I don't like the word unction. It sounds icky. I know, but when you're sick and somebody lays their hand on you you're, and blesses you, it feels good. You can really feel that God loves you and is always with you no matter what. No matter what. I guess that says it all, folks.
bravo. Yay. Thanks, you guys. Y'all are into some deep stuff and godly play right now. And I love the uh, effort to wrestle with our biblical stories and to creatively, okay. you know, put them into uh, a modern way of thinking uh, in the Zoom world. Zooming all over time through Zoom. That was pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, that was great. Great acting, very creative. Everybody, the, the parents were the heroes of this. As all of those costumes and all of the backdrops and a lot of cueing, now it's your turn now. <laughs> it, it was, they were truly the heroes. Thank you so much. And we had a lot of fun with that. Wow. It was fun for the production company, which is third, fourth, and fifth grade. Um, to include the godly play kids, some of whom, I mean, most of whom can't read yet and still did a really terrific job with their parts. Mm. Well, I love uh, the, the formation and the friendships that are emerging through all this. Uh, thanks, uh, Mary and Sarah and all of you who uh, collaborated on that. It was, it was awesome. Don, you too. Okay, everybody, it's, it's, uh, it's past lunchtime, so let's, uh, let's sign off for now, but keep each other in our hearts, and we'll see you next, next Sunday, if not soon. See you next Sunday. Bye. Okay, peace out. Bye. Take care.